Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and I can assure you that I will not make a single ice pun as I take a look at Sub-Zero, who's chilling out amongst the first wave of Mezco's Mortal Kombat X series. This is Kwai Lang, specifically the brother of Bi-Han, the original Sub-Zero. That is literally all I have to say about the Ice Ninja family tree, as going any farther tends to leave me confused and out in the cold. Sub-Zero shares a lot of Scorpion's qualities in having a very fine sculpt for his 6-inch scale, punctuated with a large number of clean paint apps on just about every major detail. Where Sub-Zero falters is in his hips. For some reason, they ended up looking oddly wide, leading to a slight bow-legged appearance that probably bothers me more than most of the people watching this video. Either way, there's another good use of layered plastics to deal with the hanging groinal costume elements, and a striking head sculpt that once again manages to drop in some fine lining around the eyes and on the eyebrows. And this time, the mask doesn't fall off. It's just part of the sculpt. I know I saw at least one Sub-Zero in the store that had slightly messier eyes, so if you're picking one up in person, take a look at the faces available to you. Sub-Zero's got some open martial artsy hands, and one of them has a divot carved into its palm. Unfortunately, this is for an accessory that appears to only come with the variant Sub-Zero releases, which is a bit of a bummer to see after all the extra stuff that came with Scorpion. His hands can be swapped out for a gripping pair, and the plastic tolerances of the wrist pegs are still fantastic to work with. Though either hand can technically hold either weapon, the left hand is much better at holding Sub-Zero's ice sword, while his right hand is much better at wielding his ice hammer. These accessories are rendered in a cool translucent blue with some metallic paintwork to bring out the edges. They're also ridiculously small in comparison to Sub-Zero himself, almost comically so. His ice sword looks more like a machete, and his ice hammer is just silly! This was incredibly disappointing to me, especially after how badass and properly sized Scorpion's quartet of weapons turned out. Sub-Zero's face mask is completely sculpted onto his face. It's not going to fall off. I got a real feeling that Scorpion's head is a piece of tooling that's going to appear again. That's the only reasonable explanation I can think of. But it's weird, because these guys are otherwise like 100% uniquely sculpted, as far as I can tell. Anyway, Sub-Zero's head posability is quite good. A uh, really good range of waggle on the neck joint. All three of these Wave 1 guys have had great necks. And his bandana thing is uh, softer PVC stuff, so it'll, it'll stay out of the way. In fact, it'll kind of protrude a lot of the time, so whatever. His shoulders, I think I would say these are the worst of the three. Uh, they are pin disc shoulders, but Sub-Zero's, try as I might, only go out about this far. And I think there might be some jam paint in there, but uh, I, this just feels, even if it's not numerically as limited as the other two, for the amount of, like, bared skin on his shoulders, I was expecting a bit more. Uh, the stuff up here is all solid plastic, not PVC, so it's not going to have any give. His elbows are hinges, and they, they bend a decent just about 90 with a bicep swivel from their peg-in connection. His wrists are just like the other guys. Uh... And all the joints, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this in the other two reviews uh, clearly enough. These guys are built real well. And even little finicky joints like these, on my copies of these toys, I, they haven't felt fragile at all. Like, they pop in and out real well, they pose real well. It's a pleasure. And this guy took some real abuse because I thought his waist was going to be like a ball socket cut through here, where you can literally see a separation line through the sculpt up here because you know this whole chunk is soft pvc uh and this part isn't that's not where the joint is and i cranked on this guy trying to get his waist to twist for whatever reason sub-zero's waist is under all the pvc not above the pvc cut so when you want to turn his waist you have to turn it underneath all this stuff and get some happy creaking going on now to this pvc's credit like like between that and his ball socket hips you can see, it's real good at getting out of the way and staying out of the way. I wouldn't leave him in a pose like this for like a couple days. I would I would reset him here so the PVC doesn't get, you know, too warped. But, uh, it, it's, it's pleasant. I, I would have preferred a joint up here, just I think it would have looked more dynamic to have him twisting above the belt, but it still functions decently for what it's trying to do. The ball socket hips uh, have got the same range as the other two guys, which means he can't quite pull off the splits. Uh, Johnny Cage memo, as said in the other two, just pass along, repeat, thank you. Thigh swivel, like the other two. Another thigh swivel, like the other two. Uh, he's got a hinge knee here that bends, I think, a bit more than the other two. Now, I already did this once, so let's see. Does he does he do it better than Raiden? Oh, yeah, he bends, he bends a, a, 
a decimal better than Raiden. So, uh, I guess his knees are, are a bit better than the other two. I, I never noticed that till now. Uh, his ankles are about the same as Scorpion's. Um, not enormously ranged for their ball socket connection, but good enough to, uh, to get him flat stanced on the ground. And, uh, yeah, Sub-Zero poses decently. I would say that between the three, I found his posing to be the most limited. He still looks good in a lot of postures, but mostly his shoulders, for whatever reason, just end up having a few degrees less outwards range and just a few degrees more, like, tilt this way in their circular, you know, forward and backwards motion. He still looks good when he's posing, but I find he really has to be doing more subtle, like, you know, casting ice spells kind of postures. I mean, I thought Raiden is the best, but it could be just because Raiden has a fun hat. Like, yeah, you know, you put you put this hat on anybody, I guess they become more fun. I don't know. I gotta think about it. But pretty much, these guys all have the same posing skeleton. Just that uh, Sub-Zero, he's got more range on the knees, but a bit less range up here on the shoulders. This guy is, to me, the tail end of Mezco's first wave of MKX offerings. He's the bronze medalist, the third place athlete in a tableau of three. He's not a terrible figure, but he's pointedly outclassed in many ways by Scorpion and Raiden. The biggest offenses come down to Sub-Zero's having the most limited posability of the trio, in my experience, and the one-two punch of clearly missing an intended accessory for his palm hole and having criminally undersized versions of the weapons that did make it into his packaging. The sword and hammer must have gone through some kind of last minute change, as I find it hard to believe that they were designed to be this small right off the bat. End of the day, I think Sub-Zero is worth a purchase if you're way into Mortal Kombat or just a big fan of the character, but if you're getting choosy with what you want to pick up from Mezco's MKX stuff, I'd very much recommend grabbing Scorpion or Raiden first. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and when next we meet in YouTube Outworld, we'll see what happens when you provoke a god. A Thunder God. An action figure of a thunder god, to be honest.